Hello everybody, my name is Amul, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show where we cover internet startups, marketing, design, monetization. Uh, I'm from LA, I'm joined with... Hey guys, I'm Jeff Pelton and I'm down here in San Diego. And so this is Cup 47. Uh, today we, uh, we got an interview with LetMeHearYeah.com. So Jeff, uh, tell me a little about, what, what, what are these guys about? Well, LetMeHearYeah.com uh, is the, the cure for the commentator. Uh, so if you're a sports fan and you like to watch t uh, sports on TV or uh, chat with your buddies on the couch about sports and you might take it a little bit seriously, I think you can use this website to uh, listen to other people broadcast uh, about the, the event you're watching or you can uh, broadcast by yourself. Okay, so let me get this straight. So you're saying if I'm, if I'm a huge Angels fan and I'm watching the, the baseball game and I want to – you know, I, I want to basically uh, make my comments on the pitcher or the batter or whatever, or just yep. the play that just happened. So you I, think you're pretty good, you know some stats, or yeah. you just like to banter about the show with your buddy. Okay, so I'm I'm basically, I can basically, while I'm watching the show, I can basically say whatever I feel, and it gets recorded as part of the show? Yeah, it gets streamed in real time to all the other people listening to you, and it also gets recorded. Wow. So I'm basically, this, this service allows me to become my own commentator. Yep. This is pretty incredible. I, I have several friends and family that are like baseball or football nuts, especially fantasy yep. football. Me too. I think this is a beautiful use of technology and broadcasting and the perfect time and space. Uh, this use case of sports vertical uh, is something like kind of out of reach just because the product isn't easy to use. Uh, so we're going to hear from Ryan Graner, the CEO and founder of Let Me Hear Ya who is going to tell us about how he got started and built the product. Okay, great. So without further ado, here's the interview. Uh, so my name is Ryan Graner. I'm the uh, founder of uh, LetMeHearYou.com. I jokingly like to say that I put boring old guys out of a job, uh, but not all boring old guys, just uh, boring old sports broadcasters. Awesome. So uh, we're a platform for user-generated sports broadcasting. Uh, allows anybody sitting at home watching a game on TV to do their own commentary for the event, whether it's rooting for one team or the other, funny, stand or, you know, fantasy stats based, whatever it is, okay. uh, they can create a different audio experience. And the listeners out there can choose the type of broadcaster that they want to listen to. I think, uh, I think this is a, this is a great idea. I, when, when Jeff told me about you and showed me the site, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant idea. There's a lot of well, very passionate, you sports fans out there that are super passionate absolutely and, and they live eat breathe this shit man and so yep. okay so tell how long you've been around uh, have you gotten some traction talk to us yeah so i mean the genesis of the idea is probably i don't know two or three years old right uh and then actually sort of execution putting rubber to the road has been going on for about the last year um, and you know the key to this was okay the idea was there and you can stream on the internet and all this sort of stuff but like what's it all really mean and what it came down to was from a technical standpoint for it to work and for people to want to use it they have to be able to marry that audio up with the video they're receiving on their television right synchronizing, it. synchronizing it right yeah exactly okay, okay so how are, do you got some special technology for the syncing or how are you doing that Exactly. So that's what we've built is, you know, special broadcast and listening technology that allows each listener then to sync up the audio to their specific broadcast. Wow. So is this flash? How, how big of a challenge? Sorry, how big of a challenge was that to do the actual syncing with the network TV? I mean, everyone's got different TV channels right. and networks and yeah. time zones and the rest of it. So it isn't, it, it isn't a process where it's like automatically, you know, we sync it up, right? Um, you'll see some of those apps right now with TV shows where this, you know, it's almost like a Shazam sort of thing, right? They, they, they implant sort of inaudible cues in it that allow your second screen to sync up. Okay. The reason that they're able to do that is like that's a recorded show. Right. Like they know what's going to oh, be right. said. Right. Sports are live. Yeah, you don't, live. Right. yeah you, you can't, there's no way to do that. Um, and so what we are able to do is we're able to immediately, as that audio is created, add bookmarks into that audio file that's being you know, live streamed and created right. that allows each listener to, in a near live basis, sync to a specific point in that wow. audio stream. Wow. So nice. you basically time shift your TV 20 seconds with your DVR and you press play on the site. Okay. And now we, what, we, what we do is we use um, 
visual cues for like a basketball game. Okay. It'll be like a time on the game clock. Right? Wow, so this is like oh. I have to say, Ryan, this is really cool. I mean, uh, so how big is your team? Is this uh, are you guys making any money? Talk to us. Yeah. So, uh, so what I like to say is, you know, I, I, I've sort of scrappied this together, All which right. is, uh, I, you know, I didn't have that proverbial guy I grew up with, college roommate guy I used to work with, you know, who can do all the technical side of stuff because I'm, I'm not a technical founder. Um, so what I had to do was, you know, sort of seek out people, uh, developers, contractors, uh, and some dev shops and sort of okay. put, it, put all the pieces together. Gotcha. Uh, launched the site. We've got over 250 registered broadcasters. Uh, I think we average out doing a broadcast or two a day. Uh, we've done everything from football to oh, hockey. Wait, hold, hold on a second. So you're saying you're saying you're a lone wolf out there. <laughs> you've got the software and you got the site built. You've got you've already got it deployed. Are you yep. making any money? Are these people paying you? Is this still so, so it is. It is free for users. It's free to broadcast, free to listen. Now, okay. the long-term business model uh, associated with this is an ad revenue model. And you know, okay, that sounds great. You know, the number of times people have said, "Oh, I'm just going to stick ads on my right. site and I'll make money," right? Well, mm -hmm. no. But the reason that this makes the most sense is that people watch sporting events live. So, advertising on TV for sporting events is the most valuable ad time you'll find on TV because oh, really? you can't you don't fast forward through it because okay. you watch sporting events right. live. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And a third of all uh, live sports broadcasts are commercials. So a 3-hour football game huh. an hour of that is commercials. Wow. Yeah. But the viewer doesn't have a negative experience with that, right? We're all trained that's just the way it is. Yeah. Oh, it's time for a commercial break. Exactly. Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what I do. So I, uh, right now, just uh, full disclosure, I went on YouTube and ripped some uh, car commercials and pizza commercials. And so okay. From an experience standpoint, I run commercials right now. That's awesome. <laughs> so you're putting in fake commercials to make it feel real. Exactly. That's so awesome. I, I love that. I love that. Thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> a lot of sites do that. They'll, they'll throw in the fake ads to make it feel like a legit situation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So that's one of the next sort of technical steps for me uh, is actually doing the sort of integration with these digital audio ad networks okay. uh, to run paid advertising uh, on my broadcasts. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, so it's just you. You've got the software built. Uh, right now, it's free, so you're not really making money. Uh, how are you? How are you surviving, man? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you got? Did you get funding? Like, how how you how long you keep this dream alive? So up to this point, it's been uh, friends and family slash, you know, Ryan bootstrapping, uh, <laughs> putting the money together to sort of pay the, yeah. uh, the development costs I needed. I like that. Uh, I like that. Um, and so that's how I've been able to sort of pay the developers. Okay. okay. The Here come some hard questions for you. You don't have to answer, but can I just ask you, how much money have you sunk into this so far? Uh, Okay, you are asking a hard question. Uh, more than five grand? More than ten? More than fifty? More than twelve? Uh, give me just a brawl part. The, there, there is an excess of six figures in invested okay. in this software and technology. Right. Okay. Yeah, the software technology is uh, pretty amazing that you built it without a team in house. Uh, honestly, yeah. I give you credit. Uh, being a developer myself, I know that that's uh, quite a feat. Uh, especially like uh, I think you were telling me just before the show that you know this is special. This is a requires a specialty uh, technology. This is not just another web app or website. This is a broadcasting, streaming media. Yeah. Uh, a lot of niche problems involved with uh, what you're doing technically. Right. Yeah, I mean this is a fully custom, uh, two fully custom uh, flash players and a fully custom. Uh, media server uh, software configuration. Wow, man, that so, is hardcore, yeah. man. So, so you've got 200 broadcasters on here, which is just great. Uh, you say most of them are football, or w what sports do you say are at the top? So we've done, you know, we launched the uh, end of last summer, so we were just doing sort of baseball and that. We've done, then we had a bunch of football guys, we've had basketball, we've had hockey, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting back into baseball now. Um, so, I mean, the thing with sort of sports is like, oh, well, it's seasonality. Well, it really isn't because there's always a season going on okay, uh, so, in so, sports. So, uh, not to interrupt you, Ryan, but there is money in sports merchandising, like crazy money. 
Why yeah. don't you become an affiliate for a lot of these sport merchandising and start dropping affiliate site uh, links in here? Be considered that. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 lots of things can do, right? I mean, it's all a matter of you said it before, right? Lone Wolf working on putting the team right. together. No, I hear and from you. my I standpoint, hear you. it's uh, like, you know, where where can I spend my time? And I was right. saying this before, like my focus is team and money right now. Okay. Because okay. the idea there, the traction is, is, is there, the technology is there, and now it's got to scale, right? Okay. And that's all going to come with, with uh, you know, money and team. And so so, so I, want, I want to get to the team and money question, uh, but real quick, let me ask you something about scaling. Uh, one thing that Amul and I usually look at with the products, um, you have 200 broadcasters. Are, are they your evangelists? Are they the people that are out there spreading the word for you, like naturally bringing exactly. in the audience and sort of draw, uh, you know, driving the growth for you? Or, or how do you rely upon that? Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, they're, they're sort of they're self-promotion machines, not on the, uh, uh, unlike the two of you, right? You create a podcast, but you sort of self-distribute and yeah. self-promote uh, it. And that's yeah, so what how, my broadcasters do right now. Now, right. I would like to evolve be able to you know, sort of drive listener traffic to their broadcast, but I've targeted a number of these because they're already popular bloggers, podcasters, uh, smart. You know, blog talk radio smart. Show very guys. smart, very smart. Yeah, yeah so, so if they've got a big that, social media presence, a footprint, hey, get on my platform, start using my technology. Right. You know, because if you're trying to compete with, you know, there's tons of guys out there with blogs and podcasts uh, and blog talk radio shows and sports, but I'm the only one out there where you can actually do your live commentary for the game. Right, so um, it isn't it isn't about pitching a better you know mousetrap for what they're already doing. It's about giving them a different media platform um, that they can sort of help grow for whatever you know. Some guys do it for ego. Some guys do it for fun. Some guys do it because they're really trying to move forward in their career. I mean, right. you know, the platform allows the user to you know define their own experience. Oh, very cool. So, what's your next step here, man? Uh, we're April 2013. Like, what, what's what's go, what's going to happen this year for you? What are you what are you pushing hard for? So, this year is going to be the year of sort of uh, really converting this from you know idea, product, site to business and company. Uh, and you know those those things come with with people and money, right? So, like I said, at this point has been let's let's scrap it together, right? Let's Here's the idea. We got to make it happen, and right. that's what I've done. Okay. And now it's saying, okay, not only to make it happen, but it's working. So this year is, you know, putting putting real, um, you know, sort of a, a chunk of money in the bank that's going to give me the 12 to 18 month runway needed. Okay. Uh, and to start putting the sort of key individuals, uh, developers, marketers, designers in place that are going to be needed to to sort of build out the site and the features and capabilities. Gotcha. Okay, so you've got you've you've got the concept together. It's no longer vaporware. You've got some people already using the platform. So you got the technology. Now you want to basically raise some more money. So you yep. have a 17 month kind of uh, runway, build up the team and then possibly get some advertisers on board. Is that the next step? Yep. So part as part of that sort of, you know, team and sort of scaling up the offering, okay. uh, part of that development, uh, you know, cycle and sort of roadmap is actually integration with digital audio ads. Okay. So they're not unlike, you know, if you had an independent radio station, right? Just like if you had an independent blog, you can go to Google and put some, you know, some banner ads on your site, right? There's these digital audio ad networks out there. So that's the phase one. Okay. Uh, is to work with them to sort of get that paid ad. You and know then, what? You, you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we were just at the at the ad tech conference that just happened last week, and I don't yep. remember Jeff. You can you can correct me if I'm wrong. Did you see in like in in stream audio only? No, I was just thinking about it. I mean, obviously we, we probably uh, we saw just about every booth in the exhibit hall, and we didn't see anything. I don't think that was uh, specifically in audio advertising. Yeah, yeah. saw a lot of video hosting. Uh, we saw some other reverse <laughs> audio APIs, but not not this uh, not uh, advertising. So yeah, so there's some there's some out there. The largest is probably Target Spot, which is in New York. Um, it's a Union Square Ventures backed business. Oh, cool. Uh, they do and here in LA, Triton Media, uh, and they deal a lot with you know sort of the big. Um, uh, you know, rate you know CBS Interactive and all their online radio and ESPN radio. So the big brands, big brands. Yeah, the big brands. Gotcha. Um, and what's coming up is 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 some startups that are moving sort of downstream from that. Okay. Um, one that I've liked quite a bit is called AdsWiz, uh, A D S W I Z Z. 
Um, you know, it's founded by guys from sort of independent online streaming radio and podcasting. Very cool. Um, and there's some more along those veins that are sort of looking at sort of digital audio. The problem with video is, you know, especially for someone like me, it sucks up so much bandwidth. Yeah. And it's so expensive to it, deliver. Yeah, it's very expensive. So have you considered video for your product? So uh, I've considered it, and here's the reason that it it's too much of a danger for me that we talk about that syncing, right? And once you've synced, I've got to now maintain my sync for in excess of hours. Okay. Uh, buffering created because of oh, the bandwidth man. needed for video can throw yeah. off my sync, and that yeah. screws my user experience. Right, right. Yeah. right. It's just not worth it right now for yeah. the uh, benefits. Wow. There. I, I have to tell you, Ryan, this is a pretty ambitious uh, thing that you've – and I'm, I'm shocked that you've gotten this far by yourself. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, so with that – why don't we why don't we cut to your product? Let, let's let's go through it. Sure, let's do it. So let's uh, I will pull this up for you. And really be, briefly, and I forgot to mention this earlier. So you're an LA based startup, right? Yep. So uh, I live and work in Santa Monica. So LA based. Uh, I actually moved to LA as I was starting this. So okay. born and raised uh, in the Midwest my okay. whole life, um, and. You know, so strangely enough, moved to LA while I was starting a business where I knew very few people uh, when I moved here. So you know, just to make things a little more challenging when you're starting a company. <laughs> right. <laughs> very uh, cool. Very cool. So yeah. So I want to watch walk you guys through the site real quick. So yeah. this is just uh, you know our landing page for Let Me Hear You. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. just sort of the the sort of bold commentary on that were the the cure for the commentator. <laughs> I love that. I that's love a, that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, both of yeah. us I, I when I first saw it I was like that's really clever. Yeah, it really speaks to like what I love about doing podcasting and that it's, you know, everyone is given a voice it seems to me with uh, the internet and I, I just love that. Yeah, so this, you know, this is I and mean, we basically have two users for the right site. You know, there are uh, you know, broadcasters or listeners. Uh, and I'm signed into sort of my account now, so I can go through sort of what it looks like as a broadcaster. Okay. Uh, but just a quick landing page. This is how easy it is. And these are actually the next sort of three scheduled broadcasts that uh, are coming up. But if you just want a broader look at our schedule. Okay. Um, so this is built out. So tomorrow we've got, you know, an Indians-Red Sox game, uh, a Celtics-Pacers game, and so forth. Uh, you know, so forth and so on. So our, our broadcasters basically create their own schedule. Each of them individually pick which events that they want to call. Okay. They add them to our schedule, and that, that gets populated up to this master schedule for the site. So any okay. listener could come and see, you know, hey, is the game I'm watching going to be broadcasted by somebody? Okay. Or they can go in here um, and, you know, I'll be perfectly honest, you know, discovery needs a lot of, you know, work right now from the standpoint of finding a broadcaster, but okay. all the different broadcasters have got profiles that you can go in and, you know, read about them or listen to their past broadcasts. Oh, you can. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So everything, uh, uh, gets stored. So all the old broadcasts are in there and get scored. So if you want to, you know, check out a broadcaster's old, uh, you know, the last game they call just to see if you like them. You know. and, and can I follow? Like, is there any way? Have you considered doing like a where I can sign up for an email and then you know basically get this guy's feed sent to me? Yeah. So basically, right now, this the way this site this site is set up. The the only patient people that have to set up a, a profile is a broadcaster. Um, you know, it's all a matter of you know what needs to get done first, right? The next course, evolution mm -hmm. on that is that. Every user of the site can set up a a, a uh, profile, and you can follow specific teams and right. specific teams, broadcasters, yeah. and yeah. you know all, all that goes along with that. Again, right. um, absolutely on on the roadmap of you know building yeah, I, a real I, I community could, around the site. Yeah, totally. I could see uh, my roommate's an Angels fan. I could see him following the Angels, and then yeah. seeing all of the broadcasters who are broadcasting at those games or for those games yeah. uh, and it's kind of inherent competition right there's a little bit of right. rivalry between the the, uh, the commentators I think is a little bit of the idea as well that you can do better than the guys on TV or yeah, yeah. The other guys trying yeah and it's part of it's just about it's it, you know this is all built around the concept of options right and you know we're, we're forced as it stands right now into a single experience right mm -hmm. you listen to whoever the network decides you have to listen to when you're watching the game Right. That's it. Are you seeing anyone broadcasting doing anything particularly out of the box? Like uh, you might have mentioned, like uh, are they, you know doing fa bringing fantasy points into it or bringing a different angle in on the game than most people. Anyone making it a drinking game or 
you know, doing anything else in parallel with the uh, the present, you know, the broadcast and normally the. We've had to, we, We've certainly had guys bring in. Um, you know, one of, one of the more interesting things is, is lots of discussions around gambling uh, okay. that take place. Cool. Uh, you know, sports gambling obviously being a huge market, and right, you know, right. talking about the effects of certain things within the game okay. and the effects that that has on okay. you know certain lines or probabilities of certain bets happening. Right. Yeah, you don't hear that on TV. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. And listen, let me tell you, Ryan, there's so much money in gambling. I mean, it's crazy, especially yep. sports gambling. I don't know if you can get a piece of that, but that'll that'll help <laughs> with that bottom line of yours, my friend. Yeah, if I can uh, figure figure a way to do sort of micro event uh, gambling, uh, certainly certainly would do so. Uh, I think, I think there's, the term... there's some big boys out there fighting over that pie, right? I'm I... trying to. Uh... I make a the, new pie. I think the term they use is if you can find a way to turn some game into a skills-based game and then bet on that. Like you, it, I forget that there's a there's an actual verb. It's like it has to be skill-oriented, and you can turn it into mm -hmm. a game. And you can actually like ch get credits within your system and have people pay you know, twenty bucks for a hundred credits. And I don't know. I don't know if there's a way for you to build that into. Let me hear you, but. Um, how about uh, anything else besides uh, big sports, NFL, NHL? Uh, any what, What's the most obscure thing that you would do there uh, as far as sports go? Well, I mean, in this sort of drop-down, I mean, I've basically created, like, oh, wow. you know, we don't have the capability to do all of these sports yet, but, I mean, sports is a global, um, you know, fun, you know, it, it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sort of cultural experience, right. and while I'm obviously very U.S. focused, I mean when you talk about you know soccer and cricket and you know rugby and boxing and all these you know all these different sports and, and the ability to take this on a real global basis um, is really sort of exciting for me, right? It isn't like oh you know this only works for you know. NBA basketball. No, it works. Sports are universal. Passion for sports is universal. Opinions about sports are universal. Right. Uh, you know, no matter what language or where you live, people are fans of sports. Right. I, I love this idea, Ryan. This is a great idea. It really is. Um, so uh, now that we're seeing a little bit of your product here um, and, and you talked a little bit about your roadmap, uh, tell us a little bit. I know you're an LA based startup. Um, as far as I know, you, you've worked out of Coloft, right? One of the kind of the big uh, co-working spaces here in uh, Santa Monica. Tell us about yep. that experience. What's that like, and, and what are your takeaways? Yeah, so it was great for me. I sort of brought this up a little earlier, right, which is that I moved to L.A. as I was starting this. I mean, literally, like, I knew half a dozen people uh, that lived in L.A., Right. Um, I'd actually only been to LA once in my life when uh, <laughs> when my wife and I decided to move here. That's cool. um, so Coloft was great for me because I was sort of walking into a built-in uh, network of people that were interested in and operating in the startup technology space. Okay. Um, you know, and not everybody at Coloft is you know a tech founder entrepreneur, uh, but everybody operates generally in the space of, you know, startups and technology and, you know, what's new and cool stuff. And so it was a great place for me to walk into just to meet people and, you know, just osmosis picking up about what's going on in, um, you know, in L.A. around startups. Who so do did, I meet? Did you, uh, how much did you end up spending with it? Did you do that $300 a month thing or did you do more? What was there? Yeah, so I work. I've got a part-time uh, membership there, so that's twelve days a month. Okay. Uh, so I'm part-time there and part-time at home. It okay. usually has a lot to do with how much I'm going to be on the phone during the day. Okay. If I'm going to be on the phone a bunch. I tend to not go in there because it is a very sort of startup, open air space. Right. Um, and I talk loud. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> so do you find that being there helped you uh, actually get good advice from those around you, like? You know, when sometimes you you know you're a startup, you're wearing all the hats, and you hit a problem, and it sort of becomes a roadblock. Were there any of those types of things that it helped you break through? Yeah, I mean, either technically or just maybe meeting people. Yeah, I mean, I I can't think of like a specific situation where I was like, oh, here's my problem. Like, who do I go talk to to solve uh, that problem? And it's mm -hmm. not because it's not saying that like that wouldn't have helped. It's just I I didn't have necessarily that experience, uh, but. It broader situations and having like, hey, what do I do about 
this, right? Or I'm in this situation where, you know, hey, it's time to raise money, right? Everybody yeah. in that room. Yeah, every, is exactly. Shape or form. And that, that's what I want to get at here. And, yeah. and as the last guy that we spoke to, his name is Said. He runs this big incubator called Plug and Play. It's got 350 startups all in one building. It's crazy. I, wow. I, I, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, wow is right. Anyways, uh, you know, and I talked to Michael, man, raising piece. money is, you know, is the most important thing a lot of times with, after the product. And he, and he says, oh, I call it blood. And so my question to you is, were you able to get some guys there at, at Koloff to give you some pointers on how you can raise money? I mean, uh, what, uh, talk about the fundraising. Like, what, what, what? Yeah, so um, I'm really sort of, when I first came into it, I was like, oh, well, I've got this idea, and it's a good idea, and I'll just raise money on the idea, right? And that just it, it just wasn't working, right? Uh, yeah. It does work for some people. You <laughs> You know, you've got to have a lot of things going for you, not the least of which is luck and timing for that to, you know, turn yeah. out. Okay. So, uh, so let me guess, were they asking for customer acquisition cost and sort of uh, growth well, rate? It was, a, it was a little more of like, okay, you know, show it to me, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I want to see it. They want to see the prototype, so, yeah. Right. So, so that's where I said, okay, well, you know, I believe in this, so I'm taking my money and then beg, borrow, and steal from the people who uh, – care about me unfortunately for them and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get the product built get it right. working get it growing get it you know so that that was the approach um, that I took now is it is Koloff to have a place where it's like oh you just walk in and that automatically means you're going to have access to investors or you know no it isn't you know it's it isn't necessarily like that but no place really is um, everybody's Everybody I've talked to has been willing to talk to me and help me out and right. make introductions. And right. I've tried to reciprocate as best okay. I can. All right. So, um, so I guess maybe the question I should be asking is: Were you able to get any introduction to angels by being there at Coloft? Can I draw a direct link from an introduction to an angel? To yeah. Well, Coloft? you know, like I met this guy and that guy turned me on to that guy from Coloft. I would have never met him if I wasn't hanging out over there. That kind of thing. Uh Hmm. I mean, I, I I don't have something where I'm that specific, okay. but I mean, my whole, you know, I guess the majority of my relationships in LA are based on being in Koloff because that's where I've started all okay. my relationships. Okay. So I don't necessarily all tie them all back uh, right. to being in Koloff, but yeah. for me, yeah. probably everything is tied back to Koloff because yeah, I live in Koloff. Yeah. yeah, I mean... I was walking in blank slate. Yeah, so. yeah, blank slate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool, man. Uh, That's awesome. This is really great. One of the things we're going to start doing is we're going to follow up with you know people that we've actually interviewed with six months later to see if they're still around. All right. <laughs> well, I hope I'm still around. In whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're here right now, and actually, probably uh, we probably met it the first time, probably at least six months ago, actually at Coloft yeah. at a uh, networking event. Oh, did you? Uh, okay. Where hackathon where we were on the same team, actually. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, we uh, spent a couple days together over a weekend, and uh, I think that you have uh, a ton of traction. Having 300 broadcasters to me says it works. Uh, the technology is, uh, to me, the biggest hurdle. <laughs> and so my hat's off to you for having a working product, and I'm sure it's going to take off from, from here. Uh, yeah, you know, for so, sure. So I mean, how like I said, the head's down to, uh, you know, to get the right people in place and uh, to put the money in the bank to, you know, pay those people and do some of the other things that uh, need to get done to really, you know, it's primed to blow up, right? It's just, you know, it's... It's right there. Yeah, you're right there, man. That's what it sounds like. So my question, uh, my last question to you is, so Ryan, you know, you're here from the Midwest. Let's say somebody's watching this show on YouTube and they're not in L.A. They're nowhere near California. They're in some other country, some other state. Well, what advice would you give that guy? For 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 starting a startup, (laughs) let's say they got they got an idea, maybe they even got a little something going. Like, what 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 would be something you'd tell them? Yeah. So. I get this advice uh, sometimes. Yeah. I actually have my MBA from the University of Chicago, and I know that's like can be a very dirty, ugly word in the world <laughs> of startups, right? MBA, uh, uh. <laughs> it, it can be, and, and for good reason. Uh, there are certainly uh, some some reasons that it has that, but just like every person is different, so so I'll, I'll get approached sometimes with like, "Well, should I, you know, do this? I've thought about this." And my response to someone is like, "Well, should I do this?" Is no. 
Because if you're asking for someone else's approval or you need some affirmation in order for you to do it, this is way too effing hard right. to need someone else's affirmation okay. to, to start a company. So that's the first sort of step. And then if you decide that, like, I'm going to do it, like, burn the bridge behind you. Awesome. Right? I love it, that. It is, <laughs> don't give yourself an out because yeah. – if if you think you have an out, you, there, it's too hard. Yeah. Like it, 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 yeah. you you can't do anything other than force yourself to succeed yeah. or crash into the ground. I love and it. I love otherwise, it. you'll half-ass it. That you know what? So, that's probably that's actually one of the best. Yeah, I really like that. I've asked well, this question several yeah. times. This is great. That's really hardcore. Like straight from the heart. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Do so it. If you want, Burn the bridge behind you. All right, so my my uh, what, so if people want to get a hold of you. How, what's the best way of doing that? What the best way of getting you know? So you can always go to letmehearyou.com. Uh, there's a contact page. You can send me anything you want. Uh, you can always uh, hit me up at rg at letmehearyou.com as well. So that's letter R, letter G at letmehearyou.com. Uh, and I'm happy to hear from anybody thoughts, ideas, criticisms, uh, help. You know, right, right. straight cash, homie. Any of that works. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. So if you got straight casts, send it <laughs> his way, he, because he's got the technology built out. Looks like he's got a little bit of traction. It, it, yeah, these, this next uh, next round could be could be really profitable. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's prime to take off. So. Sounds yeah, this good. is a really hot field. I think this is your uh, right where you need to be. Hopefully, all of our uh, uh, sports fans listening will uh, jump on both as broadcasters and listeners. Yeah, I mean, that's just it. It's a lot of fun. At the end of the day, that's why I tell the broadcasters, too. This this platform, this site, sports is entertainment. It's yeah. fun, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's just what it is. And the site is making it fun for you. You get to decide what's fun for you. And right. uh, not what, you know. You know, you, you know uh, even though I was going to end the, end the show right now, I have to tell you, man, if you can get, if you can go to one of these, like, alcohol, beer, Type sponsors and get some of these guys behind you, man. Oh, it could be huge. <laughs> yeah, these, <laughs> these guys have got money to burn, man. <laughs> it's true. I uh, we, we can talk about that one offline. Uh, okay, yeah. a, lot, all right. a lot of opportunities. Well, thanks for your time. I think this is really motivating uh, for all of our uh, audience who are you know trying to get started themselves uh, to see how you were able to come out to LA and bootstrap this yourself and uh, have a beautiful working product. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks, fellas. Hey, I had a great time talking to you both. And, uh, yeah, well, I'll be back on six months. I'll probably uh, be heading back out then again to, you know, raise the next round after that. They say, okay. you know, once you close the first one, you have a beer and start raising the next one. That's right. That's go. right. There you go. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, everybody.